Todos los cristianos somos responsables de la misión de la Iglesia. Todos los sacerdotes, todos. Los sacerdotes no somos los jefes de los laicos, sino sus pastores. Jesús nos ha llamado a unos y a otros, no a unos por encima de los otros, ni a unos por un lado y a otros por el otro, sino complementándonos, somos comunidad. Por eso debemos caminar juntos, recorriendo el camino de la sinodalidad. Claro, ustedes me pueden preguntar, ¿qué puedo hacer yo, conductor de autobús, yo, campesina, o yo, pescador? Lo que tenemos que hacer todos, dar testimonio con nuestras vidas y corresponsabilizarnos de la misión de la Iglesia. Los laicos, los bautizados, están en la Iglesia en su propia casa y tienen que cuidarla. Lo mismo que nosotros, los sacerdotes, los consagrados, cada uno aportando lo que mejor sabe hacer. Somos corresponsables en la misión. Participamos y vivimos en la comunión de la Iglesia. Oremos para que la Iglesia siga apoyando por todos los medios un estilo de vida sinodal bajo el signo de la corresponsabilidad, promoviendo la participación, la comunión y la misión compartida entre sacerdotes, religiosos, laicos. So good evening, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, we are proud to have with us another session on this uh, conversation hour. And we hope that this conversation hour will be uh, as lively, as spontaneous as possible, uh, because we want to share with one another our views based on the theme for this month, the Pope's video on a shared mission. So um, before we dive into it, just some introduction. Eh? This conversation, conversation hour series changes the world with one conversation at a time. Okay, As apostles of prayer, right, in collaboration with Pope, with Pope Francis, we engage in spiritual conversation as a community to find a common response inspired by the revelations of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. We are empowered to identify our individual call. Our response is to collaborate the grace in the exercise of responsive action to the insights gained locally. So the objective of our conversation hour here is to see all things anew in Christ. We say a little prayer. Let us pray that the church continues to sustain us in a synodal lifestyle in every way as a sign of co-responsibility, promoting the participation communion and mission shared by priests, religious, and laity. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment, Lord, and we ask you to be with each one of us. We thank you for the gift of our panelists this evening, and we hope, Lord, that you send your Holy Spirit to each one of us so that uh, we'll be able to share freely our thoughts, our views, and also uh, things that we feel that we can go further to bring the kingdom of God to each one that we encounter. In your most precious name, we make this prayer. Amen. Amen. So once again, good evening to everybody. Uh, we are proud to have with us three people here as um, panelists. Uh, let me just give you a brief introduction. Uh, some of them don't need introduction at all, right? So I'll start with the, uh, let's see, the thorn among the roses. Huh? I'll start with Father Philip Tay. Huh? Father Philip Tay, um, he was ordained priest in August 2020. Um, hailed from Malacca. He joined the order of this Kelsen, uh Carmelite friar. I hope I pronounced it correctly, Father. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And is currently based in Ramban. He's a much sought after retreat master for spirituality retreats. Oh, he's frowning now. Okay, never mind. <laughs> he's also uh, the current assistant parish priest of the Church of Visitation in Ramban. Okay. So, um, 
for that, welcome to our session. Next, we have uh, Sister Susanna Gunawan, all the way from Indonesia. Okay, uh, she's zooming in from Indonesia, and uh, she's a Franciscan missionary or Mary nun based in Indonesia. She's the Regio. Is it correctly pronounced Regio? Regio. Uh, re region actually. Oh, yeah. region. Mm -hmm. Okay. The region of J A S M Y M, which stands for Japan, Australia, Singapore, Myanmar, and Malaysia. Wow, such a huge area you're covering. Okay. Yes, me. Yeah. And her current mission is in Jakarta. Okay. She is also presently pursuing her studies in theology. Welcome, Sister Susanna. And finally, no. the youngest in our group, <laughs> all the way from Sarawak, Kuching. Uh, we have Miss Caroline Lai, okay? But Caroline is still in KL now, right? Caroline? Yes. In KL, right? Okay, mm -hmm. yes. So she's based in Kuala Lumpur now. She's just completed her law degree, LLB, and is actively involved in youth outreach and AOHD uh, activities, okay? Um, I met her at the AOHD retreat, full of bub very bubbly with joy and etc. in the Lord, you know, she's so full of joy and excitement. So um, it's good. She's a young, upcoming lawyer. Maybe God will be using her in his vineyard. So uh, we pray for her because she's now presently discerning on God's plans for her. Okay. So let us dive into what this program is all about and how we're going to go about it. Now we have three rounds of sharing where our panelists <laughs> will be invited to share their thoughts reflections on the Pope's video team, on what strikes them from the fellow panelists, and finally, what we could do to answer to the call of our Holy Father. So, in short, eh, in short, round one, we start with Father Philip, Sister, and so Caroline, that way. Um, three minutes, can take more than that, no problem. It's a period of awareness, reflection, and my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Watching after watching the video and hearing the Pope's message, uh, how did we, how were we affected by it? What has impacted us, and why this is so? And maybe if you have any biblical text that you would like to share, we may share it in relation to the Pope's video. Okay, so let's take round one first. So I'm going to hand over the mic to Father Philip T. Right, thanks, uh, Greg. So, good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Um, now, good evening. can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. So, uh, well, the the, the synodal theme is not something new. You know that we, of course, when when it was first announced, the clergy will will come to know it first because we have we are the ones who need to know what's going on so that we can. Uh, disseminate to the to the people. So that was uh, probably about two two years plus ago, and in the past, at least two years, 2022, 2023, I've been actively going around uh, KL, even East Malaysia, to talk about the Tinodo teams, the communion participant mission and mission. So did this uh when I did for Lenten recollections and talk and retreats. Uh, this was a po popular theme for the past two years. Salt and light, communion participation mission. But the thing is this. Um, before I go into the video, because the the thing is whether you know along the way, how have we actually bought into the idea of the the, the three teams? Because to be fair, I think many people they either don't know. Or they are not sure what what these three teams are, in terms of communion. Of course, we can't go into that. But when uh, the in the post video, mainly it talks about the use of the word camino. Now, camino means a path or a way, right? So it's so the synod is not just a fact; it is a way, a path. And even though we can say that the church has tried many ways, thirty years, forty years, nothing changes. But, um. It is a journey rather than a destination or a goal. So the the one thing that he said that that I felt was okay. Maybe it wasn't. I, I felt it wasn't. Um, I didn't really agree with. Not say agree like, Okay, or disagree. But the the thing is, 
um, he said everybody walking side by side, right? One there is the uh, there is no one above, no one below. Everyone is just one on the left, one and another. But the thing is this: if you don't have someone above, how do you 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 need someone to lead the way, right? So somebody has to be in front, above in that sense. So if everybody is walking on the same level, then how are we going to find our way? Because if it's like we are we're trying this, trying that. So somebody in front is the one who will see, okay, where do we go next? What is dangerous in front? Where shall we go? So somebody had to be in front and the rest will follow. And so, but not everybody's in front, maybe one or two. Then the rest will be, of course, by the side to lead the people and to, to, to you know, support them. So for me, that that's the, the, the first thing that, that struck me. And the other thing, of course, he talks about co-responsibility. Now, this, this is not a new word. Co-responsibility has been used for the past 10 years or more. Because I first heard it in when I joined the Kamala Order in 2013, being co-responsible people. This is, uh, I think, Pope Prentice's word. So the responsibility, I agree, is not just on the priest alone. Because very often, we, we everything we point to the priest and bishop, they are them, them. Anything we point to them. But the, the fact is, all of us are responsible for the journey. Some of us can help the rest because if you imagine a priest, we need to help 1,000 people, 500 people. We can't do it alone. So you have people who are co-responsible who will be there to support us. That's why there's this support system. So this is, this is what, to me, what, what, the, what, what I agree with the Pope in the sense that we are there for one another. You are not, we are not, we are not, you don't put anyone on the pedestal. We are there. This is why the Synodal team is there. We talk about communi communion, communion, community together, participation. All of us participate together in the mission of the church. And we need to know what is the mission. So by, by having all these three things put together, then we see why we make this journey. This is why a lot of people don't understand because first of all, they don't understand what is the thing all about. So if you don't understand, of course, we will not buy into the idea. So only one, only when we understand the whole process and why we are moving like in this manner, that we can truly immerse ourselves. Even though the synod is going is currently on, it's going to be over soon, but it's not the end. You no, know, it is always an ongoing journey and an ongoing process. And and I stress here again for me, the word co-responsible is the one that I think all of us should um keep very close to our hearts. Yeah, that, that's all that I'll share for this round. Hey, thank you very much, uh, Father Philip. Uh, very insightful. I think the key word that we want to uh, take a home from the from Pope Francis' video is the co-responsibility that we are all called to. So shall we move to uh, Sister Susanna now? So, sister, would you share uh, your views on the Pope's video? Okay. Um, okay. First of all, I think when I, I've been following Pope Francis, of course, and uh, his monthly prayers also on different topics, right? And for this one, I am actually very touched by the fact uh, what, what he said. There's a few words here that uh, struck me. Uh, first of all, I think he started with, we Christians are all responsible for the church's mission. And ev means everyone, every priest, since he spells out priest means, and also the consecrated persons and also the lay people. And uh, we priests are not bosses of others. And then uh, Jesus called us one and others, not one above others, or one on one side and the others on the other side, but complementing each other. Um, there are other things that struck me, but I think this one is uh, something that I have uh, seen is moving, um, I mean, from what I've seen and experienced, because I entered the religious life also about the same time, just before Pope Francis was elected as a Pope. And uh, I think uh, for me, uh, his, uh, his uh, actions has... has uh, 
inspires me to and and calls me out to be even more uh, uh how is it alive in living my my call as a christian and then subsequently i became religious and i think uh what i understand of this is and from what i've seen it doesn't mean that we lost um like uh from what what i study now in the theology right i realize that we especially lumen gentium you know we all have different roles like the church is is a is a mystery and god has called some to be a priest god has called some to be uh um a religious a to be a lay person a father a mother single person all kinds and that it's kind of like the first corinthian 12 you know i think that for me that gives a very beautiful uh, image of this so we are walking together and we each are given roles and this role are uh, are meant to to fulfill the needs of the body of christ so that the church can be a witness in the world so uh, it reminds me also like that because the church from what I have come to realize, it's a bit like the Ark of the Covenant, you know, the Ark Covenant where God lives among the Israelites, right? And so now the church lives among the people in the world, and it's leading the, the people going one, one direction, which is towards God, whether people realize it or not, whether people fail or not failing. But we we are called to be this part of this, this body of Christ. And so I think... Um, and I think it's good because from what I understand of the history of the church and my experiences from what I've heard from the sisters in the past, it wasn't like walking together. It's really one above the others. Like there are moments in darkest time in the church where uh, it's really is authoritative that to the point that you can't say anything and you can't, even if it's an abuse case. So I think now we are moving towards a different way of being, like at least we can talk about things. It doesn't mean you're not no longer um, obeying, but we have a dialogue before we can talk about things and then we can come to the this decision. So I feel this way is, is more spirit-filled because you listen to both person, that God speaks to both person and you make the decisions together. And at the end of the day, uh, yes, there is one person who who will you have to put the name on the paper right the one who signs the paper but but it is a it is a decision that comes from everyone the voice comes from everyone uh i i think we are only at the beginning so i mean but it it brings me a lot of joy because what i feel is like that if you see if i see the history of the church we are like growing you know we are maturing as a church um we are able to dialogue better with with each other and with even with all the the bad things that come out in the church i think it's actually healthy because it means you can see our own fault that we are not perfect so we cannot keep uh, pointing other people's uh, fault also like we need to walk together as fellow sinners who equally need god and so no one is 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 100% right or 100% wrong there is there is truth in each one that that deserves to be listened to. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, sister. Very insightful on uh, in your thoughts, in your sharing. Um, over to you, Caroline, your thoughts. Okay, um, yeah, okay thank on. you, Brother Gregory. Uh, uh, thanks be to God and all the praise and glory be to God that we have this opportunity to be here and have the opportunity to be here to in this conversation. And then uh, after watching the video from our Pope, Pope Francis, uh, what really struck me is that uh, the calls on all faithful to contribute to be a sense of the core responsibility. And then Jesus called us to complement each other, not to be one above the other. Uh, for my own uh, expression when I when I heard this word from the video is that um, when we are serving in church, we have a different role, you know, like we have the the one that in the sacristans and then the one for the altar boy and then everyone play their roles in the church. Even the 
the smallest act from, from those that are serving in the church is important. If we doubt the auntie that put all, all the things in order in the church, there is something we'll something will miss, you know, in the during the mass or anything. So the mission is the same for everyone, whether in the video they mentioned that whether they are bus driver, farmer, or fisherman, everyone should contribute what they don't they know how to do best. It's a gift from God. Even a very little thing that thought that or oh, it's just a little thing that I can do for the church. But it's still important. It's like um don't underestimate what you can do for the church because you don't know that actually the little things that you think that you can give is very little and then you feel like uh, not enough or anything. But that is what God called us to do with every little thing that we can. So I still remember that after I watched this video, then one thing that come into my mind is that early this year during a retreat when Father mentioned that during the mass, we present the gifts. The gifts can be a tangible one, but the intangible one is, is the gifts that the things that you can do for the church for the mission, because um the mission is every is the same for everyone. Then we present the gift, and then as our Lord offer Himself to the Father, and then we offer the the gift that from the Father to serve in the church, and then. Um, that's why everyone and with your little things is still important in the mission of the church. And then, uh, that's why I feel like sometimes I heard some auntie in the church serving the morning coffee. They said that, oh, this is what I can only do. So they feel that they have the very low self-esteem that they wish to do more. But if you really, um, have the heart to serve our Lord, right? That is what our Lord want you to do only. You by serving in the coffee, morning coffee and things, you can really uh evangelize in a way that we can never expect. So I think that why that's why that pop call all the fat food to contribute to a sense of the core responsibility in the church. Every role is important. Beautifully put, uh, Caroline. Beautifully put. Um, yeah. Um, just to my views, because when we're going into the second round now, uh, my views on my take on all three uh panelists, uh, from Father Philip Tay just now, because after you will share your views of each other, um, my views is that um, what Father said, being co-responsible, I think this is very important that we all must be aware that we are not here to be served, but to be responsible for God's kingdom and how we can contribute. Sister mentioned about um, about 1 Corinthians 12, yes. Uh, one of my favorite words, sister. Uh, it's a body with many parts. Uh, we are all uh, come with different giftedness and that's where we come to complement each other to build this body of Christ in the spirit of synodality. And what Caroline said about doing little things, uh, it helps a lot because what she said is true to me. Uh, it's like the cornerstone. We are all cornerstones in God's building. We all cornerstone, and each cornerstone is important. So uh, thank you for your thoughts and your input for round one. Uh, sorry, I, I, I went into round two straight away with my own views. Uh, but let's go to round two now. So you have heard each other speak. So now I'm going back to Father Philip again. Uh, what is your take from your co-panelists? What are the things that you find uh, touch you and why? Uh, after hearing the sisters and Carol's uh, sharing, I think two, thing, two things uh, strike me. Like. The first would be what she says is about uh, complementary. First Corinthians chapter 12, of course, about Different, we play, we have different roles to play. And the other one is about the dialogue. Now, one of the things that, that was that was discussed or rather brought out during the regional pastoral assembly a few months ago in Majodi is uh, the church is a listening church. To be honest, I think to be fair, I think this is a fair assessment. I don't think we are truly 100% listening church. 
we, we, we are not. We perhaps we are selectively listening. So we selectively dialoguing. So because we again we are all adults here, you know, it's not about pointing fingers. No, it's about these are just objective observation that we how many people are really listening or they are really dialoguing. Usually it's a monologue. You know, I I talk, you listen. You know, I give instruction, you listen. So if you want to be a listening church, a dialoguing church, both sides have to be mature enough to understand what dialogue is about. Dialogue is not about pointing fingers. Dialogue is about two adults sitting down, talking about facts, not letting emotions rule the conversation. Because we know sometimes we, the heat, conversation gets heated up simply because of emotion. You know, we, we feel certain things. But if you want to have a true, fruitful dialogue, we need to listen as a mature adult. And this is where we the synodity part comes in. Uh, communion, mission. What what are, are we on the same page? Are we moving in the same direction? Because if let's say you, you talk about the part of the body, if the leg, one leg wants to go one way, the other leg goes the other way, then you will definitely fall down. So, you know, both legs must move in the same direction. And and this is where we, this is, I think, this is where we need to learn. You know, it's a growing process of trying to go towards the same direction together. If you have ever rowed a boat before, you will know this. Because if you try to row a boat, two person, one person row one way, the other person row the other way, you're just going in circles. And it's very frustrating. And I think this is what, it may happen. So, and what Caroline says about, I like what she says about, you know, the, the auntie who's, who served coffee and breakfast, the, the morning, coffee morning. This is what we can do. But, you know, to quote uh, St. Therese of the Child Jesus, you know, she says, you do things, you li do little things with great love. It's not about the, the act itself, but how much love do we put inside? Which is why some this is uh, the little way of St. Therese is something that, you know, we can... We can pick up because she she in the little thing that we do, how much love do we put in? Because for her, every single action, everything that we say, what love does love demand of us at that moment? So if we do something, do we do it out of love or do we do it because we want glory and praise? When we do it out of love, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how small the act is, it is love. So, and if you have ever worked with machines before, you will know this. You try to assemble a machine, you take apart a machine and you put it back. Suddenly you realize one screw is still left. You didn't put back one little screw. That one little screw can cause the whole machine to fall apart without that one screw. So little, little parts actually matter. And, and this is something that we need to, I think, educate the people. Because they want to do big things. But Jesus himself said, if you cannot be entrusted with small things, then how do you entrust you with big things? You can't. So it, it, each of us, like rightly pointed out, we have a role to play. All of us have a role to play. And we need to be content with that. Because this is the thing that we can contribute. It's not about being worthy or unworthy. To be honest, none of us are worthy. I'm not worthy to wear this, this, this habit. None of us are. But it is God who gives us the grace to be worthy. So in making this journey, in, in being together, without God's grace working, then, then it will be difficult because we are just essentially running our own business without God's grace. Because grace builds upon nature and we have to cooperate with grace. If we don't cooperate with grace, then there is no point. It's just resisting. And so, like I said, it will just become another human endeavor. And like what Gamaliel said in the Acts of the Apostles, anything that comes from God will last. Anything that comes from man will just collapse. So it is it is our journey that is uh, filled with God's grace that can help us to appreciate the little, little thing that we do to form the part of the body. Yeah. So that's my sharing for the second round. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Father Philip, for your insights. 
you know, take on the other two panelists. Uh, can I have Sister Susanna, your thoughts on uh, Father Phillips and Caroline's uh, sharing earlier? Okay. Uh, for me, I think what uh, there is one thing that kind of struck me from both what was here. Um, I think this a uh, question about that the people need to to like um understand you know that uh, what is this what is this in order what is working together what is participation communion then they can participate and i think caroline was sharing about that lady that also struck me like you know the the one serving the coffee and feeling unworthy to to serve the church in a or maybe thinking they can't do anything um uh, only serving this coffee so i think it what what came to my mind was the is it actually reminds me of my journey a little bit like because before I encountered the Lord, like really, really encountered and experienced his love, I think I I I don't really care about the church, to be honest. <laughs> uh I don't understand what is it and I don't even bother to try to find out what is it. It's just that I was baptized and I'm part of this. It's the Sunday I go because my parents go. So I just have to fulfill the obligation. And then I think, and I didn't really, uh, yeah, it just doesn't resonate with me until I went through my conversion and like really discovered and met the Lord in in when I was down and, and in, a, in a bad situation. Then I realized who is the Lord. And so it's a little bit like that, that lady, you know, who met him in the well. I think that really kind of, summarize how I, how I experienced the encounter with the Lord like you were shy you don't even want to talk to this guy and then I, eventually you realize oh my goodness this is God and then suddenly the attitude changed and she just ran into the the town and he told everybody about this 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 man and so I think the perhaps what we need to ask ourselves is do I really actually have a relationship with God because if I have relationship with God, I have really encountered Christ. I have encountered his mercy. There is no way that you will not share the good news. So if you, it doesn't matter your background. I have a past, horrible past also. And I, many people have so many different kinds of past. But it is the encounter with the Lord that makes you realize that, oh my goodness, I am forgiven. And I, my sin, his love is greater than my sin. So I can, I can get up and I can, I can try again. And I think without that encounter, that, that real, real experience of, of God's love in, in our life, I don't think we can serve the Lord. You will see the stories in the Bible. Every one of them had a, a real experience and some take Many years before they realized, even the disciples, right? Even after Jesus died, they still don't get it. Like after the Holy Spirit came and then suddenly things changed. Like then they, they understood what is it. And then it just changed naturally. Uh, you don't have to tell them what to do. They just wanted to serve. Like, <laughs> like I just want to serve. Okay, big thing, small thing. It doesn't matter. I just want to serve because I have encountered the Lord. So, so that... The real question I think uh, that came to my mind after I was listening is have I have we have I really encountered the Lord in that way? Thank you. Thank you, Sister Susanna. Thank you so much. Um I think the thing about encountering the Lord, falling in love with God, and that will motivate us and feel us and give us the mm, to to do work because we are doing it for the love of God. I think Caroline can resonate with that very closely and with you. <laughs> so Caroline, I now um, over to you, your thoughts on Father Philip and Sister Susanna's early mm. So um, I have learned from uh, Father Philip and Sister Susanna just now. So uh, what really struck me from uh, Father Philip uh, just now is when he mentioned about the uh, core responsibility and the one that uh, when Pop mentioned that not to be one above but it's like uh, with each other side by side and walking together um, uh, from when, when Father mentioned about that right uh, I I strongly agree that we need someone to guide us you know to when when they are above but 
uh, when serving in church or so, when someone above, sometimes is very uh, dangerous when they forget about their mission, the, the share mission that they need to be working together with each other. Because uh, I think quite a lot of people will face that uh, when they are serving that, especially the one above, they will... Uh, they, they didn't really compliment each other, but instead of compliment, they are discouraged each other, sometimes in the ministry. So I think um, after I watched the video, right, I think that's one thing that struck me and after Father Philip mentioned is that um, the complimenting each other is very important. We need to always remember that we are serving God. We are not serving our own glory or our own intention, our own purpose. Just to let others know that, you know, I have this high position in the church. So, you know, so it's different than the secular world. So the problem is that when they bring the secular world attitude into serving the church, then we have the problem that they're really above that person so it will discourage a lot of people in a way but uh, I think from from this October the prayer intention is that to remind that uh, even even though you are guiding others in front right uh, the complimenting with each other is still important to encourage those that um, they really don't know how to do at the very first place to how to walk with you uh, forward. So I think that one is really struck me because that is how that we experience in the church also. And when sister mentioned about the uh, body of Christ, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 12, 12, um, uh, every role is important because uh, our Lord, sacrifice for us and then we are part of his body um there is one that every role and every task that has given by god for us to do if without him um we can't do the things that we are doing right now but because of him we are able to do it he saved us for a purpose so they must have a he has a plan for us to do. So mm, that is what I have collect from father thank and you. sister. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Caroline. Beautiful uh, sharings and picking up points from uh from Father Philip and Sister Susanna. And uh yes, I think all this is uh, something very real and we are fully aware of this. Uh, it's just that um we need to remind each other of our very purpose here on earth as we continue this faith journey in the spirit of synodality um, as, as building blocks towards building the Church of Christ uh, in mission. So we come to the last part now, um, the part three, um, whereby we ask our panelists to share uh, their views uh, as, as a religious uh, none as a as a priest as a lay person. Uh, how can we, what can we encourage one another? I mean, you have said that already earlier, but it's good to uh re in, reinforce these thoughts and any ideas that you may have uh with you that you like to share with one another. Okay, so can we start with uh Father Philip again? Yeah. Right. So. You no, know, being a Carmelite, uh, I would like, to, of course, to share something from Teresa of Avila. Her three principles, uh, her three virtues, rather, you know, we call it DHL, put it on the delivery company, but um, <laughs> detachment, humility, and pride, uh, uh, love. Okay, so, you know, when we put, if you hear the word detachment, people always think of detaching from worldly goods and everything like that, but actually detachment is more than that. So if we detach, we detach essentially everything that is not of God from us. You know, we detach from our pride, our ego, our our pride, you know, our our self, self, not self-love, but rather self-centeredness. So all these things that you know, Caroline mentioned about the danger of those being above, uh, not not 
falling into the trap of not serving, but you no, know, or, or rather, you know, you you think you are like God or something. So detachment is something that we need to look at to not to fall into that trap. Because humility is the foundation of everything. If we are not humble enough to realize that we are just here as stewards. Because even in Genesis, God says we are stewards of all creation. We are just placed here to essentially hold the fort. And the problem is sometimes when we are in position of authority, we think of ourselves as God. But we are not God. We are not Jesus. We are the create creature. And God is a creator. So if we are not humble enough to see that fact, we are not humble enough to know that even the the thing that entrusted to us, uh, the the church, the people, the ministry, it is entrusted to us. It is not our right. It is not something that we're entitled to. Authority is given to govern, not to abuse. So this is even in canon law, we talk about temporal goods. Everything is temporal. We are just given the care, stewardship of all these things. So it, in a sense, if we want to really walk together, and like I said, you know, it's, it all comes to this word love. Lah. Then Paul puts it very, very clearly. I can have the gift of prophecy. I can speak, I can speak in tongue. But you know, every, at the end of the day, uh, the thing that endures is still love. Lah. You know, everything will pass. But only, only love. And as uh, Pope Benedict XVI says in Deus Caritas, as because he said, we are all made in the image and likeness of God who is love. So if, if we are made in the image of love, we are also, in a sense, love itself. And we should be capable of receiving love from God, receiving love from others, and sharing it with other people. We receive love from God and loving sharing with other people. And it is essentially, in a way, our support system along the journey. If we want to walk together as pilgrims on this journey, on this Camino, uh, if there is no love, then what is there? What is there? There is no benefit that we can reap, actually. But at the end of the day, when we pass on, we can we take nothing with us. And as John Across says, in the evening, we will be examined with love. With whatever we do, love is the one that will be the final judge, whether we have love or not. So, in, in a sense, for me, it's like, you want to sum up everything. For me, the whole journey, you come about co-responsibility and serving and everything. Everything comes down to the love of God, love of neighbor. And that, that for me, is the, 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 the sum of everything. If we can have that, we are not perfect. The journey will, is, is what we call work in progress. But as long as we are willing to grow, even if it's one inch a day, it is still better than regressing five foot every day. So for me, that's my take. And I hope that you know, we can slowly come to realize that without God's love, uh, we are we 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 can't we cannot grow as a community. Uh. Yeah. So that that's my take. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Father Philip. So um Sister Susanna, um as a as a religious uh, nun, right? Um how can we uh continue to share the good news in the spirit of synodality? and be building blocks in mission. Maybe you have something to share from your foundress, Mary of the Passion? Okay. Okay. Um, okay. First of all, I think I want to share a bit of the Franciscan spirituality, the Franciscan teachings of Mary, right? So for Francis, the, the, one of the key is the realization that God is our father, our, our father. That means why we love each other, why we love God and love each other is because God is our father. So it means we are all connected. We are all brothers and sisters and therefore we are equal and we have different roles, but we are equal before God. And that's why we need to love each other because we are created by the same. We are, it's, it's, it's like we are siblings. We should not be fighting because we are siblings. So that's one. And then I think the, so from that, is the this part about uh what Pope Francis said in the video also he asked right uh he talked about uh sure you can ask me what can I do as a bus driver a farmer a fisher 
And then he just said, what all of us need to do is to witness with our lives. So I think something maybe we forgot what is actually the mission. The mission is to make sure that everybody knows, everybody feels included, everybody knows that they, they are loved by God, whatever is their situation, they are forgiven. So I think that is the mission. And I, in for me, um, to be concretely living that is to, I mean, in a community life, of course, right? But to live it in my own life, to live for if let's say I mean, if uh in community life we have many chances for that, so <laughs> we have plenty chances. And then uh, letting go, like what is the purpose of life? Is if you have talents, you have money, that is just a tool. It's not the the end. So I think my life kind of hopefully shows that that you know the there is other things that are more important than in life. It's important. But it should not be my focus in life, power, money, and all this thing. There are some life can be lived meaningfully. So I think uh, by the choices that I make, you know, daily, the things that I purchase, what I purchase, what I choose, I choosing to take a private car every day or choosing taking a public transport, for example. Or if somebody scolded me choosing to reply, retaliate, or choosing not to retaliate. Or if I choose to walk, you know, I can simply just smile to somebody who looks very pouty. I can choose to forgive my sister who has said something maybe not so nice and just give her the benefit or maybe she's tired. I think this is all very concrete form of love where we can witness God's presence. And especially I think when we are given like difficult cross, uh, which is, for example, somebody did you very badly, you know, did you harm? And you have to really struggle to forgive, but eventually with through the grace of God, you're able to forgive. I think that is witnessing. And I think for us religious, because we live together, you know, and we come from different different family members, we we don't know what is the past sometimes of our, our sisters. So in the community, we may hurt each other, or you may have one who, who may be the seemingly the cause you know but i think the what the witnessing part is like hey how come uh, despite of they 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 do not kick her out for example or they don't explain they, they still try to come back keep on coming back even though okay maybe fight and after that you have to reconcile again but we we keep choosing to be together instead of choosing to running away to run away from the situation and I think it's the same for marriage couples, you know, those of uh, experiencing difficulties. Uh, maybe the husband is or wife is uh, the spouses are are not in a good space. And then, you know, how how do we remain uh, faithful to the vow that you have made? There's nothing, you know, to actually tie them. Everybody can just break loose. But the witnessing is how come how come you choose to stay? You know, and I and, and I think in our church is the same also. Like we are so different. The church is so is such a variety. The church in Indonesia, the church in Jakarta, in Bogor, in Malaysia, in Penang, in Sarawak, in Sabah, it's all different. Different church has their own personalities. Like but it is actually amazing that we we have our quarrels and all that, but somehow we are still a church two thousand over years and we're standing. So if it's not the Holy Spirit that that binds us together. Who else? It's definitely God's work. Even with the list of Pope, there are some good ones that are really bad ones. I mean, you can see the history of the church, but the church stands. No? So, yeah, with the witnessing of, of love through simple things. We don't have to think about big things being maybe in the Paris Council. I mean, if you have the capacity, um, blessed are you, and please do come forward and do that. But if you don't, even if you come to church smiling, you know, come out from the church after mass smiling and say hello and thank you, I think that's already evangelizing. Thank you. But, uh, we can't. Sorry, sorry, I, I muted myself. Thanks again, mm -hmm. uh, Sister Susanna. Uh, last but not least, we have uh, Caroline. Uh, Caroline, as a young adult, your views, um, maybe you can make a suggestion or an action plan. How 
how we as lay people, lay ministers, can continue this spirit of synodality to be building blocks in the mission that Christ has entrusted to each one of us. You mentioned something very beautiful, that even as leader, we also need to listen. Mm -hmm. Over to you, Caroline. Okay. Uh, thank you, brother. Uh, I think I I take it from the, the Pope, Pope Francis, the for October prayer also, the intention that he mentioned about everyone should contribute what they know how to do best. So uh, it's like the gift from God that, you know, everyone have a different gift. So um, through all the gift, the gift that we have is through the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit will guide us that uh, what is God want us to do is doing his will, but not our will. But uh, it's quite uh, challenging and difficult, especially that uh, when we are serving in church as a lady, that we we tend to do a lot of things. Like we are serving in this ministry and another ministry and different ministry. So this come to the point that uh, I, me, myself, I was asking Lord that uh, what is exactly that Lord you want me to do? So we came to the discernment. I think discernment is very important, not only for the, when we discern for the religious life, to be a priest, to be a nun or anything, especially for the lady, we also need to be, we also need to discern that what are we doing now? Is it what God wants us to do? Or what are we doing now? Is we want to do to let people to know that we are capable in doing this? You know, it's like we need to go deep down like Father said that, is it you do it because of your pride? So through the discernment, we can slowly know that, oh, when I'm serving in this ministry because I want maybe my father, my brothers or my brothers in in in, in Christ, in church that to know or this is really that in my heart that God wants to use my gift to help in this ministry. So I think by discerning uh, every little thing that we are doing in church, when we especially when we are serving, if we really find out that it's what God wants us to do, God will show us through his love, then we won't have the conflict at all. You know, you, you are doing your part and another doing their part. You won't try to, uh, how to say, like change or try to control others in doing things. So I think I can end with, uh, because since yesterday was St. Teresa of Jesus' feast day, she always mentioned that, you know, let nothing disturb you, let nothing frighten you. All things are passing away. God never change, never changes. And passion obtain all things. Whoever has God, let nothing. God alone is suffices, is enough. So when we have Christ, we have everything. So when I heard about this, all things are passing away. So all things are passing away. So what I'm, whatever that I'm doing now, so what is the purpose? But, she mentioned that God never changes. So God never changes is that all things are passing away. We see love, like Father mentioned. Why we see love? Because God is love. So eventually, it's the, your relationship with God that really encourages you to serve in the church because the love that you have for Him. So I think through the encounterment and discernment, especially in serving in church that really will help us to work together in this coming walk on earth and work together to do the share mission and to be with him one day. Yeah. Thank you so much. Beautifully said, huh? Yeah. Um, we see in scriptures, uh, Matthew today talking about the go out into the world to preach the good news, Harvest is rich, you know, um, but laborers are few in Matthew 9. These are things that, um, that God invites us to participate in his work. So whether as religious, priests, nuns, brothers, lay ministers, we all have that role. So my so now uh, before we end, I'd like to put forward this um, question or this thought for our viewers, right? 
you have heard, I invite you to pray on the on the video that the, that we saw earlier, right? Reflect on it and ask ourselves, what is my role in God's bigger plan? How can I respond to this great commission? How can I play an active role, right? No need to play big roles, but just an active small roles. Uh, Mother Teresa of Calcutta said, do small things, but do it well. Do small things, but do it well. So with that, I invite all our listeners to ponder on it, pray on it, and continue this journey in faith, in the spirit of synodality, um, in order to bring this kingdom of God to its fullness. Okay, I think we've come to an end of this thing. Now, instead of doing a summary of everything, right, I think you all have all done a fantastic job. It saved me a lot of work. Um, but before we end, uh, we'll have a short prayer after, but um, it'll be on a video, right? Uh, it's a prayer of a sacred heart. And after that, um, we'll end uh, our session. Okay, now, before I end the session, First of all, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Father Philip uh, Tay. Uh, Father Philip goes a long way with me. He's, uh, we were both from St. Francis Xavier's Church, right? Uh, he's a very spirit-filled person. Uh, he's good with uh, spirituality retreats, much sought after. Now, my father, you can buy me coffee afterwards or tomorrow. Uh, we thank you for your presence, Father. Um, Sister Susanna, thank you for coming all the way from uh, coming online from Indonesia. Um, your thoughts, your sharings uh, really enrich us all. And uh, we take home a lot of good points that you mentioned. And we continue to pray for you and your work in Indonesia and your completion of your theology. Uh, finally, not, not the last, uh, uh, but uh, somebody that is um, young. Um, bubbling with joy in the spirit of the God, uh, Caroline Knight, thank you for coming online again. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, you are a great inspiration to young people. Right? Um, we continue to pray for you and uh, we thank you for your sharings, right? Uh, beautiful sharings. And I think uh, your sharings uh, meant a lot to all of us, for our listeners, and it makes a lot of, uh, gives us a lot of input to as what we can do even as lay ministers. So thank you once again. Now, I, I, this uh, session uh, would not be completed without saying thank you to the people behind the scenes. Uh, we thank Adrian for the, te techni the technical support. Uh, we thank uh, Caitlin who did um, the e-flyer that you all saw earlier, right? Uh, she did it and uh, she did all the, all, the, all the adjustments and amendments even at the last minute. We thank Christine who who had this uh, Zoom uh, link available for us and uh, all the people behind the scenes, too many to mention. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, before we say good night, any last thing from anybody? Father Philip, nothing? Sister Susanna, nothing? Caroline, nothing? Okay, um. so, yeah, nothing. Eh? So with this, I wish all of you a good night and we hope to have you back on our conversation hour in the near future. Thank you very much and God bless each one of you. Thank you and God bless you too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, you can leave the Zoom. Okay.